Hey cruisers, we are back for our favorite type of live stream. I'm just gonna say it. I love these Q&A sessions. I think they're so good, they're so fun. I love the crazy fast pace. If you are new to our channel and you have a question about cruising, leave it in the chat. We will get to it as soon as we can. A lot of times it takes a little while. So if you'd like to retype your question, if we've neglected you, you can go ahead and do that. And if for any reason we miss you today, you can message me on Facebook and I'll get right back to you. We're gonna get right into the questions today with the first one being from Roxanne. Roxanne is in the chat today. She is one of our students in our master class and she has a question. She said, my travel bestie and I are thinking about an Alaska cruise soon and that will be our first time there. We've done 10 cruises between us plus land tours in Europe. So we're fairly well versed in general travel. Question. Is there one or a few particular things to keep in mind above all else when traveling to Alaska? Alaska, Alaska, Alaska. Okay, Roxanne, good question. I'm so glad that you asked. Alaska is a totally different animal regarding cruise packing and cruise planning and things like that. So it really depends on how long your flight is and what you're dealing with in terms of luggage and things like that. But the number one thing that, um, that Alaska cruisers will recommend to you is that when you're considering your packing game, remember that it's all about layers. A normal day in Alaska can go from a 40 degree morning to an 85 degree afternoon and you could be on an excursion experiencing all of those things and maybe even a little bit of rain all in one day. So the first thing you want to consider is consider really packing those layers carefully. For some reason, when we cruise to Alaska, we, found, we find that our clothes get a little bit more dirty. So we tend to do a lot more laundry on an Alaskan cruise, but that does not have to be the case for you. But if your ship offers self-serve laundry, maybe pack a couple of um, little, what do you call them? Just travel size laundry detergent type things and have them with you. Or you can have your laundry done on the ship if you'd like to. So layers are really critical. Another thing that you should probably know about Alaska is that glacier days, the days when you're viewing the glacier are going to be the coldest days on the cruise. They're very, very chilly. And a lot of times you'll be viewing the glacier in the very early morning hours. So you wanna pack a few things with you that'll keep you warm during that time. It might be a scarf to put around your neck, it might be a hat, it might be some gloves, um, but you definitely want a little bit of extra warmth for that day. And my last tip for Alaska is that, again, on Glacier Day, you wanna get up really, really early if the, um, if the schedule requires you to do so, get out on deck and do not miss the tranquility of pulling into the passage that leads you to the glacier. Really, truly, the passageway that takes you to the glacier is just as beautiful. There's a silence when you're sailing in that area that's unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. The ship is sort of gliding. The passengers are extremely quiet. There are actually laws against making certain amounts of noise in those areas. So there's just a peace that you really will never find on, another, on, a, on a cruise to another place that I think you're gonna really cherish. Um, I do actually have one more tip I wanna share with you about Alaska, and that is that after you see the glacier. So you've gone down the passageway, you've seen the glacier, you've all had this wow moment, everyone has their cameras out. What people tend to do is they tend to go back inside the ship and go do something else. Don't do that. Stay out on deck and enjoy the fact that everybody else just went inside the ship and you've got these open decks kind of to yourself. This is not always the case, but generally speaking, if the weather is good, I highly recommend that you do that. And again, enjoy that beautiful sailing down the passage. Hope that that helps you. All right, so next question is from Felicia Wake. Is the masterclass for people new to cruising or will it benefit seasoned cruisers? Felicia, it can definitely benefit people who have been on cruises before. I think what you'll enjoy if you're a seasoned cruiser is the checklist. So we've created packing lists for warm and cool weather cruises. We have to-do lists. We have a, a, a kind of a list that tells you what to do when you book your cruise a month out, a week out, and the day before that any cruiser could probably benefit from. We have a shopping list in there and we have a, an ultimate shore day bag list. So there's a little something for everyone. I would say it's geared mostly towards newer cruises or people looking for a refresher, but I think that the lists alone for a lot of people will be worth signing up for. So we hope you enjoy it. Cute cases. Hi, Sherry, your hair looks 
gorgeous. Thank you, Cute K. The funny thing is I didn't curl it today. I washed it this morning, blow dried it really quick and then went to the gym and then I kind of ran a flat iron through it a little bit because it was looking kind of wild. So it's a little different today, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Yes, my dear. You know, I just want to elaborate on the, um, the glacier viewing and yeah. the crowds. Um, I, I have my headphones on, so you may have said this, but I just want to make sure that everybody understands. Sometimes you're out there trying to get photos, mm -hmm. and when you first pull in, it is so crowded that sometimes you can't even get your, your camera like above or around people. Mm -hmm. The last time we did glacier viewing, we waited for everyone to leave, and it was just me and one other person, and we were walking around the entire ship taking photos with n no obstructions whatsoever. So it's definitely worth waiting. Agreed. Best tip we can give someone for Alaska. It was hilarious. I have a picture of my husband on one of the upper decks, and he really looks alone on the ship, you guys. It's crazy. And this was a big ship. It was a big princess ship. So lots more questions coming in. All right, I'm going to go from the bottom up a little bit. So those of you who asked questions a little while ago, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, can you focus on some of the older questions? And I'm going to go from the bottom up, okay? Um, let's see here. Yes, Roxanne, Kim and Roxanne talking about Thanksgiving. Yes, they do do some Thanksgiving things on the ships. Every ship is a little different. You'll almost always find decorations and you'll almost always find a Thanksgiving meal. But it's there's not as much activities as there are for um, Christmas. So you're not going to get as much. Okay, um, let's see here. Judy said, with cruising Alaska, which port is better, Seattle or San Francisco? You live on the East Coast. It is air travel, either port. Judy, if you're going to be cruising out of San Francisco, you're likely going to be getting a 10-night cruise instead of a 7-night cruise. We prefer San Francisco for a different reason than you might, and that is because we can drive there. <laughs> we live in California, so it's not, a, it's not a quick drive, but it's definitely easier for us than flying, so that's why we do it, and we also love the fact that it's a 10-nighter. You get lots of sea days. Um, if you prefer a shorter cruise, you might want to fly into Seattle, there's, and there's also a ton more options out of Seattle. There's not as many cruises out of San Francisco. Okay. Um, all right, so Nix living at the tip said, I've read that people take food from the buffet back to their room. I love the idea of a snack in the balcony without paying room service fees, but is it really as common and not frowned on as I've read? Depends on the cruise line, Nix. Norwegian tends to not like you to take food out of those buffet areas. I've seen them stop people. Most other cruise lines are pretty cool about it. But sometimes it does feel a little bit awkward walking out of there. Um, if there's an employee standing at the exit, they may stop you. But, um, you know, so you can probably get free room service on your cruise, depending on what line you're on. It might be easier for you to do that. The other suggestion I have is if you do want to take food back to your room, take something small. So, like, for example, grab a small plate that's used for dessert and pop a sandwich on it and a napkin and it doesn't look as obnoxious as carrying a tray. A lot of times that's what we'll do. We'll grab some cookies or a sandwich or a piece of fruit, put it on a small plate, and you feel a little bit more subtle, I think, when you're doing it that way. So I hope that that helps you. Um, Laura says, I have a question. The time of sale for Miami Port in the embarkation day will be at 11 p.m. What time do they start to embark? 11 p.m., Laura? What cruise line is this? I don't know the answer to that, but it's probably normal embarkation procedures, like 11 a.m. or noon. But um, you're going to need to check in your cruise planner. It'll tell you when you embark there. Sorry that I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, Biller says, are you putting together a video on GoPro tips? You're shopping for yourself for Christmas. You know what, Biller? We probably, we, we haven't planned to do the GoPro one. My husband's not really the front-facing guy here at Cruise Tips TV. A lot of people have asked us to do it. We'll, we'll try to think of a way to do it, but right now it's not on the schedule. Um, okay, Nancy said, what do you think the weather will be like in mid to late April in Japan and what to pack season-wise? Nancy, depending on where you're going in Japan, my understanding is it's still somewhat cool. Um, it sounds like you're going during the cherry blossom season, and I think you need to pack more cool clothing. Um, I think it's probably also there's some chance of rain. So I would go with spring to winter type of clothing. Okay. Um, I think we got Kim's question about Thanksgiving. Um, Cute K says, I have a question about travel insurance. What exactly is it for? Excellent question, Cute K. Travel insurance is designed to cover you in the event of some kind of an emergency or trip cancellation on your cruise. We could talk about it for hours and hours. There are lots of different caveats and rules. However, um, 
the most important reason that I think people buy travel insurance is for medical coverage because when you go on a cruise, your medical insurance provider, if you live in the United States especially, is not going to cover you if you become ill. And the medical rates on the ship are extremely expensive. If anyone would like to hear a story about someone who just had a um, medical insurance claim, I suggest that you go to Doug, um, Doug Parker's podcast called Cruise Radio. And I want you to listen to episode number, um, oh dear, it's not showing me the episode numbers. Let's see if I can figure this out. I want you to listen to the last episode that Doug did on Cruise Radio when they did the Norwegian Gem Review. His guest actually um, had a medical situation on board and had to file a claim. And so what the person did, what Richard did, the gentleman he interviewed, is he had to pay for the medical treatment on board. And then once he got, he got a packet in his room that explained to him how to file the claim when he got home. So the first thing you have to do is get it denied by your insurance. And then you take that denial letter and you send it to the travel insurance company to get your claim. I can't answer a lot of questions about travel insurance, guys, because it really requires a high level of expertise but I'm trying to learn as much as I can about it. Geraldine said, going on Royal Caribbean, will the bartender fill a tumbler with water or do we have to get cups? You might need to fill your own tumbler with water, Geraldine. In the buffet, they should have self-serve water fillers. You probably can't ask the bartender to do it. If you do, they'll probably put it in a cup and hand it to you for um, sanitary reasons. Okay, let's see here. Um, yes, Julia goes, says, you, says, I've gotten seasick on the two cruises I've been on, but love the idea of cruising. Um, any suggestions to fight seasickness without medication? Yes, Julia, if you suffer from severe motion sickness and you'd like to go the non-medicinal route, I do strongly suggest that you invest in the Relief Band 2.0. The Relief Band 2.0 is a non-medicinal, love you too, babe, non-medicinal, um, solution for not only motion sickness, but chemotherapy induced nausea, morning sickness. It is a uh, wearable. So it looks like a watch. We, if you go to the relief band Facebook page, you'll actually see me wearing this shirt, doing a video on the product. Um, they are not a sponsor. They are simply a wonderful company that we connected with many years ago and we've stayed in touch with, and we absolutely love their products. So I recommend that you check that out. Okay, so, um, all right, a lot of you are asking about the masterclass, so I'm going to go ahead and explain what the masterclass is really quickly. Yes, it is all new content, Peggy and Wendy. It is a 20 video series on a platform called Thinkific that we created for newer cruisers or people wanting a refresher. When you are going through the process and watching the videos, you're learning everything about how to plan a cruise, how to um, save money on a cruise, how to research a cruise, and then you're jumping into very detailed video lessons on what to expect on the ship, what to expect when you get off on port days, and what to expect um, on disembarkation day. And then what we've done, because we think people really want printables and downloadables, is we've created a ton of checklists for you. So we have a resource checklist, we have a packing list for Alaska, a warm weather packing list as well, and we have just a lot of resources in there. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, can you link to the masterclass for them? so that they can check it out. What we're doing is we're looking for founding members to take the class and give us reviews on the class and give us feedback. So we've made the price super duper low. It's $15 until November 17th, and then we're going to be raising the price after that. So if you wanna get in as a founding member, we want you to do that right now. We haven't decided on what price we're gonna set afterwards. We're still evaluating the class. So do check it out. We're getting excellent feedback, and we're also offering an opportunity for people to join a closed Facebook group as a student. So once you've enrolled in the course, you're welcome to join this closed Facebook group as a student. There's instructions in the class on how to do that. And then what we're doing is we're also inviting coaches into the, um, the Facebook closed Facebook group and those people are already members of our community and they're going to get in there and help answer questions from newbie cruisers. Once Vlogtober is over, I'm going to be spending a little bit more time in the group as well on Facebook and we're going to be doing live chats and private Q&A sessions. They're just for our students. If you're in the chat today and you want to be a coach, 
we need you over in that Facebook group. You don't have to take the course to become a coach. We just want you to agree to be a supportive team player in that environment and help answer questions and just be there for our newbies. And it's called, if you go to our Facebook page and go to groups, it's called the, um, it's called um, Cruise Tips TV Students and Coaches, and you can just request to join. And myself or Natasha, who's our moderator, Natasha, who's in the chat today, will accept your invitation. We just want to keep it. We want to keep it a very um, supportive learning environment. So I hope that helps you out. Okay, getting back to Q and A. Renee, we're going on Princess for the first time. Shall we book specialty dining restaurant and embarkation day? You certainly can. I think it'd be a really good idea if you really want to kind of get into the groove on your vacation. Renee, it's a good idea. Um, if you're traveling for a really long time though and you think you're going to be super exhausted, maybe skip it and do it another night, but it can be a really wonderful way to really, I, I don't know, I just think it feels special and it kicks things off nicely. But in my opinion on Princess, you could dine the whole week in the regular dining room, not go to specialty and feel very pampered. Sorry guys, super thirsty. I'm also a little bit tired today. If I seem a little bit tired, you guys, I am. Um, my son and I went to a Pilates class this morning and it was really intense. And I think I'm also just a little bit tired from a long work week. So please forgive me. Wayne, thank you so much for the super chat. That was really sweet. Okay, taking a drink and I'll be right back guys. Okay, sorry for the loud noise. Clank, clank. I needed a straw and I didn't bring one today. Tina and Rick Spencer say, best time to travel to Alaska. Any time is a good time, Tina and Rick Spencer, but we love early to late May. I'm sorry, mid to late May. Just We just love it. It's been the driest time for us. We've never had really cold weather. In fact, any time we've ever cruised in May, we've never had rain. The one time we did go late August, we had totally had rain and it was freezing. So I love that time. Okay, Consuelo Martinez, I love this question. She says, can I book a cruise with a carnival agent and get the insurance with an outside insurance company? Consuelo, yes, you can. In fact, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of nuances though to booking that insurance. You must book your insurance right away after you book your cruise. I believe it's within 14 days. Please consult with a travel agent. If, you, if you've booked through a Carnival Personal Vacation Planner, I understand that that's a little tricky, but maybe if we have a travel agent in the house here today, they can tell you um, what they recommend in terms of timing, but you need to book it quickly because you don't want to add travel insurance after a known event occurs. You can't you can't hear about a hurricane coming and book travel agent uh, travel insurance the week before your cruise. It doesn't work that way. So like once a hurricane is named, for example, you can't buy travel insurance for that trip. It's really complicated, you guys. Someday we'll, we'll try to get a travel insurance expert on the show and interview them. I think that would be really great. Okay. Um, okay. Lindsay said, have you done the Cabo excursion, the three-hour pirate ship and snorkel with lunch? Is it really only three hours? Is it fun? You know what, Lindsay? Um, we did the pirate ship, but it wasn't three hours. The one we did went to another. We went far down to the south coast of Vallarta. I don't know if you're in Cabo or Vallarta. I missed that part. I don't like the pirate ship. I got kind of sick feeling on it. Um, they fed us breakfast down in the in the what in the hole, and oh, it was too. There's too many people. I just did not enjoy it. I don't know what it was. It was one of those excursions I would never do again. My son wasn't even that excited about it. It was okay. I just, I don't know, not my jam. But um, I think if I were you, if you want to do a snorkeling excursion, maybe skip the pirate ship and just do a regular catamaran snorkeling excursion and you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, Misty Gibson, there probably isn't peanut butter on the menu, but you can definitely ask for peanut butter to be served with your melting cake they will bring it to you. They'll just have it in the back because they serve it with breakfast, but it's not something they put on the menu. Um, yeah, Tammy, just go ahead and request to join as a coach. We'd love to have you. Sarah Lumby says, do I need to pack closed-toed shoes? You'll already have a pair of tennis shoes for your boys that are eight and nine to use in the MDR. Yeah, Tammy. I mean, Sarah. Yeah, I think you should take closed-toed shoes for them. I wouldn't put them in flip-flops or sandals for formal nights. Flip-flops or sandals are fine for the other nights, but just take their sneakers and let them wear their little sneakers with their suit or whatever they're wearing. My son just wears a shirt and a tie and pants. Um... Uh, Tim said, question, on Carnival, can you add money to your sign and sale count before your sale date? Also, thank you for all the info. Tim, I'm not super well-versed in adding money to your sale and sign count account on Carnival. Maybe somebody else can answer that question. I think you have to do it once you get to the terminal. I think you take your gift cards or your money and you do it then. 
Jay signed in pink. How is Alaska in July? It's usually beautiful. Um, it's more crowded and it's more expensive because that's when kids are out of school and that's when most of the tourists go. Juanita said, do you know if Norwegian Star offers any Zumba or aerobics classes? Yeah, they totally do. And one of the best Zumba classes I ever took was on Norwegian Star. And they did it poolside. So fun, Juanita. Um, Henry, do cruises cancel much for bad weather? No, they generally don't cancel. They usually just redo their itinerary. So there's, if there's a storm, they're just going to avoid the storm-ridden area and create a new itinerary for you. Most likely they will not cancel. Um, Adventures of David and Aaron, what is the weather like in Alaska during the last week of August? It can vary enormously, but last year when we cruised there, it was cold and rainy. Um, it was more wet than usual. We didn't have a huge amount of sunny days, but it was great. I mean, it's Alaska. You kind of expect it to be cold. Okay. Melanie J says, if you have a spa cabin, would it be better to book spa treatments online for 20% off or wait till you get on the ship? Wait until you get on the ship, for sure. Um, Emily wants to know what the weather is like in Nassau in March. My understanding is it's absolutely beautiful. It's one of the best times. It's cooler. The water might be a little chilly, but um, it's better than summer. Got Melanie's question already, honey. You can take that one out. Delena says, how do you book a coffee package on Princess before the cruise? Um, they've changed from the coffee card to the coffee package. I'm not sure how you do the, the grinds thing on Princess, but it should be in the, um, it should be in the onboard purchases section where it says that you want to buy the beverages or beverage packages or gifts. Go in there and see what it says. If anybody's bought the, um, the coffee package on Princess lately and knows how to reserve it exactly where it is on the website, please let her know. Miriam said, how much does it cost to park in the Long Beach port and will my car be safe? I think your car will be safe. Mine is always safe. They've recently raised the price. Let me Google it for you really quickly, Miriam. I think it's between 17 and 20 a day now, or maybe 16 and 20 a day. 18. 18. That actually sounds right to me. I think 18 is correct, Miriam. It's really pricey. We still park there though. We still leave our car the whole time when we sail out of um, Long Beach. Okay. I know there's lots more questions coming in. Yeah, Shauna, I would totally recommend Introductory to Scuba in St. Thomas at Coral World. I really like those scuba um, resort pass type days. I think they're wonderful. Um, Kelly, I got this shirt at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I don't know which. They often have these in the spring. They usually come back. So watch for them. I know my husband likes this one too. Okay. Um... Uh, Lovejoy Gratitude said, is embarkation usually later than usual on a new ship that's just repositioned from a foreign country? It could be. Lovejoy Gratitude, yes, because of customs. That can definitely commonly happen. John is reporting that the cost to park in the Port of Long Beach has been raised to $20 a day. John, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, Diane said, will it be easy to get an Uber, to, an Uber to Galveston port from your hotel? You're staying 15 miles from the port. It should be, Diane, it should be very easy anywhere in the state of Texas in, in those areas. I think that, that it will probably be just fine for you to get that Uber. It shouldn't be an issue at all. Mm. Um, Taylor said, does anyone have a review for the NYC Carnival Inspiration? What do you mean NYC? Doesn't Inspiration Sales out of, um, out of Long Beach, Taylor? We have, we have um, reviews and videos on Inspiration for you. Okay, Natalie wants to know, Natalie Keen said, is the thermal spa package worth it on Oasis? Does anybody know? Everyone who I've heard talk about it said they love it. I think it's great. Tina and Rick Spencer, all you have to do to sign up on the Facebook page is go to the Cruise Tips TV page, look under groups. We only have one group. Just request to join and please answer the questions and just announce yourself as a coach or a student, whichever one you are. Consuelo said, can I take a reusable water bottle or coffee mug filled with liquid on board or do they need to be empty? I don't know. Um, I think you have to empty them. I'm pretty sure that you have to empty them even if they are reusable, Consuelo, but they'll have a place you can pour out the liquid right before you go through the security scanners. Does anybody know or has anybody had any experience with that? I think Nurse Nancy is right that you need to empty your cup. Okay. Good questions, you guys. Yeah, I think I got, I got Consuelo's, yeah. 
Um, Melanie said, could you buy internet day passes? Yes, Melanie, on some cruise lines you can buy internet day passes. Um, like for example, Carnival allows you to buy them by the day. Most of them do, and some of them even offer passes by the minute. So you should be able to do that on most lines. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. Uh, Johnny Witt says, anyone have updates or know about Haven and Sweet Cabanas on NCL's private island? Great stirrup. Okay, I don't know about that, but if anybody else knows, please let us know. Wayne wants to know if anybody's been on, on Norwegian Breakaway. Okay. Um, if we've missed your question at this point, folks, please go ahead and retype it now. We're going to stick around for about five more minutes. Um, we are, let's see. Oh, okay. Fiona says, best way to learn the ship once on board. What a great question, Fiona. I think it, um, one of the best things that we like to do is if your cruise line, when you embark, if they still give you a mini ship map, I think it's great to keep it with you for the first two or three days and then just walk around the ship on your first day. Just start getting familiar. Just start roaming those main decks. Usually the promenade deck is a good one. The upper pool decks are also good. Retype your questions if you have them and we've missed you, everybody. Okay. We would love to help out today. Um, cute K, I don't have Carnival Splendor Hawaii vlogs. I'm very sorry. Yeah, Nurse Nancy, we did Goff's Key in Belize and we loved it too. Okay, Misty Gibson said, any tips or suggestions for someone with selective autism or other speech disabilities to order food in the MDR other than having someone order for them? Um, Misty, do you mean that they need assistance with ordering? Um, I don't know specifically how to answer that question, Misty, but I'm hopeful that somebody can help us out. Maybe someone who's watching this in the replay would have a little bit more information for you. Okay. Um, Stephanie's clarifying where to find the Princess Coffee package. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That's in the chat for anybody who needs to see it. Um, Emily said, we have faster to the fun on Carnival. Yeah, you will have a set check-in time, Emily. They, it's a little bit confusing, but your faster to the fun paperwork will tell you when to arrive. Usually it's 11 or 11.30, just so you know. Okay, what are some of the must-see ports? I just missed the question. I lost it. Where'd it go? Um, oh, oh, Becky said, what are some of the must-see ports in the Mediterranean? Becky, there's so many to choose from. Um, I can tell you some that are on my dream list, if you'd like. Venice is on my dream list. Um, I think that would be one that I'd really like to hit. The Greek Isles, for sure, definitely Greece. Um, don't miss Barcelona, that's a wonderful one. Who else has some good must-see ports in the med for Becky? Um, yeah, I don't know. Pocopo, I'm not sure if you can order more than one of each dish on Celebrity Specialty. If it's a main dish, you're probably going to have to pay extra for a main, but they might let you get away with two appetizers of desserts. If anybody sold on Celebrity and knows the answer, please let us know. Um, Millie, I don't really have a favorite cruise line, but we have sailed the most with Princess. But we've had favorite, our cruises have been favorites for a lot of reasons, and I could go through the list really quick for you. Thank you, Seth. I really appreciate it. Um, we, our recent cruise on MSC was one of our favorite family vacations of all time. We were crazy. We had so much fun. We did so many wild activities and there was so much to offer on the ship that it, when we talk about it, we're like, yeah, I think that was one of our favorite vacations for family fun of all time. Um, we love Princess for Alaska. It's really wonderful. Uh, Carnival's fun and great because it, the value is good and their service is just exceptional. I loved Holland America when we sailed on it because the service was so incredible. I, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced on a cruise, so it's tough. We, we love Norwegian for a lot of reasons too. I love Norwegian for the way that they innovate on their ships and I really love freestyle cruising and I dig the specialty restaurants. Tammy, thank you so much for the super chat and you're very, very welcome. We appreciate you. Okay, let's get back into some more questions. Yeah, Tog Daily, Oasis of the Seas is awesome. You gotta get on that ship, do it. Okay. Um, Yi Chang said, we are sailing Alaska in June. The Princess website right now doesn't have many booking choices such as restaurants and entertainment activities. Is it because, it, yes, Yi Chang, it is definitely still because it's eight months out. They will appear. Six months, you're gonna see more of them pop in and it, at 120 days, you're gonna see a lot more pa um, pop in. Yes, Diana, regarding, um, yeah, good, good suggestion for people to go follow Scott Singer for his transatlantic. That's a good one. 
I'm going in for more questions. Okay, um, GEP Gel Mix says, I'll be going to Bermuda on a cruise in two weeks. We'll be at King's Wharf. Suggestions for excursions, especially given, yes. Where does everybody go um, in Bermuda, guys? What's the name of that beach that everybody goes to? Help me out here. I think you've got to do it. I can't remember the name of the beach, but let's help with the um, Bermuda one there, guys. Help me out here. Uh, Miss Wemba, Mui Simba, any recommendations for Grand Turk? If I were to go to Grand Turk, I'd walk down to Jack's Shack to meet Topher the dog. That's what I would do. Okay, Natasha wants to know, how is Carnival Breeze? Have you been on it? I haven't, Natasha, but everybody raves about Breeze. I hear it's an amazing family ship. If you're anywhere near that port, do it. Yes, um, number one boss, we love Mr. Sancho's. The food and drinks are great. Um, we haven't tried the horse riding excursion. I personally, my son likes Mr. Sancho's a little better. I like Nachi Kakom a little bit better because they're two different experiences. Uh, Mr. Crucibs TV, can you move Shauna's question up for me? Thank you so much. Okay, Shauna, definitely do birthday dinner in a specialty restaurant. Good idea. Tim said, has anybody heard about construction being done on Triumph recently? You leave November 24th and... Um, the seventh floor is being remodeled. Oh, Tim, I don't have the details on that right now, but if you Google it, just Google Carnival Triumph Renovation and you should be able to find some information. Um, I think I think Shauna might have been looking for a pick on either uh, main dining room or specialty restaurant. I did, I said specialty. Okay. Okay, I don't know what ship she's on too, so I can't give her like a specific restaurant. Okay. I know we've got more questions. Okay, Dear Sister 888 says, how long does the tender process typically take if you don't book an excursion with the ship? It can take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour usually, Dear Sister. Definitely take your patience with you that day and um, yeah, just take your patience. Um, Taylor, Princess does not ship out of Long Beach. They port in San Pedro, which is obviously very close to Long Beach. It's just a 10 minute drive, so yeah. Vanessa, Carnival Magic, I've heard is great. I've never been on the ship, but I've heard good things. Natalie wants to know, favorite St. Martin Beach? Okay. I'm trying to find more questions here. Oh, um, yes, STNCC1701E. Oh my goodness, that's a long one. Have you ever done Eshkaret in Cozumel? You and your family are thinking about doing Wondering Who's Worthy. Yes, it's really fun. Shellha and Eshkaret are great. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing those right. They're really fun. It's a lot to do. If you're cruising into Cozumel and you're taking the ferry over to the over to the mainland to do that excursion, it's going to be a really long day, but it is really fun, really fun with kids. I've been there and I liked it. It's not my favorite thing to do in that area, but it's a little bit touristy, but it's really fun and you kind of got to do it once. Dawn says, what's a good excursion in NASA for a 52-year-old and an 8-year-old going on the Alicia in April? Well, Dawn, it depends on your budget. Um, you could do, there's so many different things. You could do the Blue Lagoon Beach Day. You could do NASA and get water park passes for the day. You can even swing with, swim with stingrays out there. There's a lot of fun things to do. So if anybody wants to leave some comments, we could do that. Okay. Tagdal says, is January a good time for Oasis of the Seas Caribbean cruise around the Bahamas? Absolutely great. You're out of the woods with hurricane season. It's an excellent time to go. Highly recommend it. Okay, guys, we're going to spend two or three more minutes answering questions. And if I miss you today, don't forget to message me on Facebook, okay? And we're going to be back tomorrow with another live stream. I will announce the topic all over social media a little bit later today, but it will be a different time. Tomorrow we're going to be going live at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So we hope that you can make it and come back tomorrow. Same time? No, not the same time. Same place. Same link, same place. Okay. Um, oh, Kim Spooner said, do you have to book seating at shows or is it first come first serve? Kim, it depends on the cruise line. On Norwegian, if you're cruising on Norwegian, you probably want to make as many reservations as you can. On other lines like Princess and Carnival, you just walk right in and there's no reservations even available. So it really depends. Royal Caribbean, you can re reserve some, I think, too. Um, Bill Wife Jane here says, good fruity drinks to recommend on Princess. Ooh, fruity drinks. I'll have to think about that one because I'm not a fruity drink drinker, but somebody else who, um, who likes some fruity drinks on Princess, leave it in the chat or in the comments, depending. Nancy wants us to post the Facebook page. Um, Nancy, I don't know if Mr. Cruise Tips TV has a link to that, so let me send it to him really quick. Honey, I'm going to go ahead and email you a link to the page. Hmm? Oh, do you want the page? Yeah. The, the page is facebook.com 
forward slash cruise tips TV and then just navigate to groups and look at cruise tips TV students and coaches and um, request to join. I already see five new requests that came in during the live stream, so that's great. Um, what does, oh, Stephanie said, when do they decorate ships for Christmas? My cruise is the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, they're probably going to have it decorated either Thanksgiving week or the day after. So you have a really good chance, Stephanie, of seeing that. Ooh, Christy said, try the rum punch on Princess. That sounds really fun. Um, we, Melanie, the all-inclusive day pass we like in Cosmo, we like two. We like Nachi Cook Home, and we also really like um, Mr. Sancho's. They're both really fun. Johnny says, is taking the transfer from the port to Disney to go to the park worth it for an excursion? Johnny, I've heard it's a really long day, um, but they do give you really good transportation, and I think it's a good opportunity. If you have the money, I would think you can do it. Nicole, tips for cruising with a one-year-old. Sure, Nicole, cruising with a one-year-old is wonderful. Um, when our son was one, we definitely needed an umbrella stroller for him. I would recommend that. Um, definitely allow your child to try more um, foods, get adventuresome with foods. It's an opportunity for you to allow them to branch out and broaden their palate a little bit at that age. So my recommendation to you is that you, before you go on the cruise, I want you to buy some of those plastic covers that you can place down on the table that stick to the table and let your kid put the foods down there let your kid just go to town on all the new things and as a mama you need to enjoy being spoiled and not doing dishes for a week and just let your child have fun let them run down the halls they're not a one-year-old isn't going to disturb anybody and do any doorbell ditching let them run let them play let them have fun they probably can't go in the pools because of the diaper thing um, so enjoy it. You're going to love cruising with a one-year-old. It's the most relaxing thing ever. Your child will probably sleep better than ever. At least ours did. I hope you enjoy. You can always message me and we can chat some more. Okay. All right, you guys, we're getting ready to sign out today. We're hoping that if we've missed your question that you're not going to be mad. Uh, just message me and I'll give you a personal response over on Facebook. Really, I promise I can, I can do it usually within two or three days. So, so yeah, come back and see us tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'd love to have you. We're gonna go enjoy the day with my mom today. We're gonna go get her a new phone. We're gonna go get some food and just enjoy some family time. Thank you all so much for being here with us day after day after day during Vlogtoberfest. We really appreciate you guys. We're enjoying Vlogtober so much that I'm telling my husband I wanna do it again in like in the middle of the year. So maybe in six months, we'll have another month long vlogging event because I think it's fun and it's an opportunity for us to really get a lot more questions answered and and interact with our community so thank you so much for being here today see you tomorrow at 11 a.m pacific and until next time we'll see you on the high seas hey click me to subscribe